Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for um, a few minutes of your time to talk about mental health. And I guess first and foremost, if you saw in the agenda um, or the emails that we were gonna talk mental health and you immediately uh, reacted with an eye rolling or a deep sigh, um, I get it, I understand. And we realize that the word mental health is becoming um, this terminology that's, I feel, beginning to lack significance. And so if your initial reaction was one of eye rolling or deep size, please take a step back and just listen to what we're going to briefly talk about today. And then I challenge you to just kind of have a renewed or refreshed um, outlook on mental health because it is impacting all facets of all of our lives. Uh, today, we're going to talk about schools, teachers, students. Um, and I just ask that you have kind of an open mind uh, when, we, when we say the words mental health. Um, first and foremost, this is a significant issue. Everybody knows that, right? And it started at the beginning of spring 2019, um, we're in the midst of it, and there is no end in sight. And what I mean by that is the impacts the ongoing impacts from mental health issues um, that we're gonna describe are going to be very lengthy. Recovery and just getting back to whatever this quote new normal is, it also is going to be a marathon. And so um, we are here to help you navigate this both from a professional um, lens and also from an academic standpoint. So just uh, uh, kind of heads up that this has become a credible national emergency. Um, again, this is addressing children and youth uh, and their mental health well-being, but we also know that it is a national emergency when it comes to adults too, because we are all suffering uh, similar issues when it comes to mental health and how we're responding to this. On the next slide, I want to give just a few tidbits of stats and, and information. What are we talking about when it comes to the significance of, of mental health issues? So uh, first, one in six children in the United States have some type of treatable mental health disorder. Um, now, again, this is just of the group that has access to or has been seen by some type of community mental health agency. This does not account for all of those that may have, um, you know, some sort of aversion to seeking uh, treatment or help. So this is only data related to those that have actually actively sought um, treatment for some type of diagnosed uh, mental health disorder, depression, anxiety, um, ADHD. Those are some of the prominent uh, diagnoses that we've seen. Um, suicide rates, particularly among uh, 12 to 17 year old females has jumped 50% in just the same time in 2019. Um, and please understand that this ranges from all socioeconomic backgrounds. This is not one particular group of, of teen girls, this is all. Um, and so we have very prominent affluent schools that are dealing with this issue just as much as those more um, suburban and urban settings. Um, so it's an issue. We also see this, this uh, increase in men as well, young men as well. Um, and then just being mindful that as of November 2021, um, 140,000 children in the United States have lost a primary or secondary caregiver. So not only are they dealing with the impacts of being isolated and, and um, all of that, but then they have also lost the person that was um, set there to, to care for them. Um, and so there might be multiple factors that our children are dealing with, aside from all of us as adults who have lost a loved one during this as well. Um, and so some of, some of this information, I know that there's a lot that we talk about around youth, right? And how are we dealing with the youth and their behaviors in school? But if we ourselves as teachers, as educators are dysregulated, 
we're no good to the kids that are coming in also dysregulated. And so we know that our teachers are struggling just as much. And so one of the articles that I was reading last week that I've, I've referenced here, surveying teachers, 48% of them have admitted to, leading, to leaving their job in just the last 30 days. And of that 34% have said, I'm out of teaching altogether. Um, so we're just, you know, building upon all of these things. And I would welcome you to take a deeper dive into that particular article, because it really gives a lot of good thoughts and ideas around how do we support our staff right now. Um, and, and one little side note, it said, stop talking about self care. As a practitioner, as a mental health professional, I despise the words self-care. I'm sorry, and I apologize to anybody that does love them. It says stop talking about self-care. We don't have time for it. We, we, it, is, it is in one ear and out the other. But instead, we need to be there and show up for one another. We need to show self-care by saying, hey, how can I help you? What do, what do you need from me today? That's how we counter this self-care. So anyways, I invite you to take a look at that article. It gives some really great tips on how to support our staff. So how do we support our kids and why? Why are we dealing with these high uh, incidences of mental health, the behaviors that come around? And I know you guys know all of these, but this is just a reminder. Um, as Chris was talking about this up and down in surges, right? We all have plans. We have vacations, right? And it's all, well, we have this trip planned, but... We might have to cancel it. It might have to be. So we're losing this uh, kind of element of hope and something to look forward to. There is a constant disruption in our routines. Are we going to school today? Are we not? Can I meet up with my friends this weekend or not? From kids, can I go and play with my neighbors? Can I have people over? There is a continuated, a continuation of disrupted routines. There is this underlying of, if I get sick, what's going to happen? Can I go to the hospital? Will I need to go to the hospital? Will my mom or dad die because they got COVID? There is just this constant concern and worry about, if I get COVID, what happens? We know that the economic and housing insecurity issues have been ongoing. Um, I you know, used to work in, in the specific area around um, students experiencing homelessness. And when, when businesses were shut down and their parents couldn't go to work and then they couldn't pay for their, their housing and it is just this cycle, right? But we know now even still that hours are cut or, inability to go in and, and report in a physical space, uh, we know that there are continued concerns around economic issues. Um, and with the ta child tax credit ending, with some of the other things that have helped our families sustain, that is a continued concern. And then finally, just the social isolation. We're tired of being by ourselves. I know some introverts have loved it and they're like, please let this continue. Um, I applaud you that thrive in that sort of circumstance, but the in and outs of I'm isolated this week. Oh, I get to go and enjoy being with people this week. Oh, I'm back to isolation. It is just the unknowing um, and constant and, and sudden quarantines. So let's flip the lid and say, so how can we help? All of this stuff, right? Um, and this is not an end all be all. If you want to spend an entire day with me and we can talk mental health and all of these solutions, I welcome you to send me that invitation if you have that time. But instead, I'm going to give you three helpful uh, points. We need to educate, we need to assess, and we need to intervene. Um, so first and foremost, all of our school personnel and our school staff, I mean every single person from the front desk to the security, to the classroom, to the lunch staff, every single person in your school building that has the potential to interact with kids needs to be able to recognize any signs that are off. Like 
there's something different about him or her this week that I didn't see last week or last month. I've seen a decline in them coming to school. They're just not turning in their homework that they used like they used to. Something is off. Every single person needs to have hot eyes on every single student um, and be educated on what those signs are. You need to assess. So now that we've observed that there's some concern around a student, how are we gonna see if this needs to be elevated? If we need to really take action, don't assume Johnny's just having a really bad day. We have no idea what happened to Johnny last night or this morning. So don't assume, it's always better to ask questions than to assume you know what's happening. Don't be hesitant to ask those questions. Pull Johnny and sit aside and say, hey, man, like we went in for our high five, our fist bump this morning and you rejected me. What's up with that? Like, tell me what's going on. Tell me more. Um, and if you're not getting anything from them, because we know that kids are fearful to talk about what's going on. Maybe they're just not ones that are open for conversation. My teen boy, I only communicate through him with him through text because he just doesn't want to open up. It doesn't matter. Reach out to our to their family. Reach out to other people in the school. Ask, have you seen the same things that I'm seeing? Get and start creating your team. Because the next step, once you've identified and have a better understanding of the situation, it's time to intervene. It's time to take action. Um, and again, it's not one person responding to this one kid. It is a network. It is a tribe that says together, we're going to make sure that this student, that this family has support and they're connected to the right resources. You may not have them within your school community, um, but please reach out. It may be outside of your school walls that, that uh, will be the services that these students need, but don't just say, ah, they'll be all right. It's just a bad day offer those, those network of support, and then make sure that your school and that your staff know those resources, if not for themselves, so that they can forward them on um, as they come across students and families as well. Again, community agencies are chomping at the bit to be connected with schools, and this is an awesome opportunity for them to become involved. Um, Again, happy to answer any questions as it relates to mental health types of interventions. How do we behave? How do we build this behavior uh, threat assessment team? Any of that, willing to dig in deeper with you on that note. So thank you for your time today.